Hello everyone. I'm Mike Sullivan, and I'm here to introduce our lesson today. We are looking at Joshua as the new leader of the children of Israel. Moses was laid to rest and God raised up Joshua as their new leader. As the Israelites finish their forty years of wandering, they find themselves once again at the entrance to the Promised Land. They are at the Jordan River ready to go in. This time it's the kids and teens that now are adults, and they are ready to go in and take the land that God is giving them. Before Joshua goes in, he sends two spies to check out the land and to see what Jericho holds for them. The difference this time, is that these two spies when they return, will only report to Joshua and Caleb. No one else. See you all next week. Okay, let's clap those hands. Cool, let's sing God, you're so cool. God, you're so cool. There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you. God, you're so cool. And that is why. God, you're so cool There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you God, you're so cool That is why I love you so much Your love is so big, it swallows me up I really love being your friend Your heart is so big, with space in it for me you do everything so lovingly Oh God, you're so cool There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you God, you're so cool Oh, and that is why I love you so much Your love is so big, it swallows me up I really love being your friend your heart is so big, with space in it for me. You do everything so lovingly. God, you're so cool, God, you're so cool. God, you're so cool, God, you're so cool. Yeah, yeah. God, you're so cool, God, you're so cool. God, you're so cool, God, you're so cool. Let's clap those hands. God, you're so cool, God, you're so cool. Yeah, yeah. There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you God, you're so cool Oh, and that is why I love you so much Here we go! God, you're so cool There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you God, you're so cool Oh, and that is why I love you so much There's no one else, no, there's no one else like you God, you're so cool Oh, and that is why I love you so much Hello everyone, I'm PF And we have a part one of another part two in this series Only because there's so much to try to squeeze into one week so we had to split it up in two weeks again. So let's get on with this today. Now, 40 years later, the Israelites found themselves again preparing to enter the Promised Land, this time under the leadership of Joshua. Joshua was, by the way, one of the two surviving spies 
who had participated in the operation conducted under Moses. As before, there was a need to send spies into the Promised Land to get the intelligence to support the invasion that they were about to do. So Joshua, however, went about things quite differently. This time, he only chose two young men whose names are not recorded and instructed them to scout the city of Jericho as well as the Promised Land and then get back to him, but only report back to to Joshua. Now these spies went into Jericho and they visited a lady by the name of Rahab whom they came in contact with. Although the presence of the spies was reported to the local authorities, Rahab hid the spies and kept them from being captured. She told the two spies that the people had been expecting an Israelite invasion for some time. She reported that despite the fact that the city was well fortified and the army well trained, the people were frightened of the Israelites and had lost courage to stand up to them. Now, the escape of the Israelites from the Egyptians and their successful crossing of the Red Sea and the subsequent destruction of Pharaoh and his armies and their exploits during the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, that is, in the desert. Well, they were very well known to the people, and they were convinced that the Israelites were in authority of everything they wanted to do. So Rahab was convinced as well that the city would fall, and she made an agreement with the spies that would help them leave the city and not reveal what she had told to them. In return, they would spare her and her family during the attack. The spies agreed with Rahab. The spies agreed with Rahab and helped in their successful escape. The spies eventually then made their way back to their own people and the spies reported to Joshua everything that happened, especially the information given to them by Rahab regarding the fear of the people. They were scared to death of the Israelites because they knew that God was with them. All right, now Professor Whoopi will be back here in just a little while to continue our story today. See ya. Greetings everyone. I'm JV the Bible Junkie. I'm here to do the memory verse with you today. Our scripture is found in the book of Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, now Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1a. NKJV. Now everyone, at the count of three, I want you to say the verse with me. Are you ready? One, two, and three. Now Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1a. NKJV. That was great today. Remember this was the third time that spies were used in the Bible. So, Forty years later there are only two spies sent in to spy out the land and concentrate on the city of Jericho. Well, there's so much more coming your way, so keep it right here till the end. I'm JV the Bible Junkie, and I will see you next week. Hello everyone. I'm Ben James. I have an awesome object lesson I want to share with you today. It's about walking by faith and not by sight. God in his word the Bible tells us that our walk in the Lord Jesus is a walk of faith, and not sight. Because many times we don't see what's ahead, but Jesus does and he guides our steps if we choose to follow him. What seems right to us can be a path that leads to trouble. Yet what seems foolish at times is Jesus' way of protecting us for the traps of the enemy. In this simple illustration I have three cups. Cup number one. Cup number two. And cup number three. 
As you can see, they are all empty. Now I'm going to pour water in one of the cups and then, move them around. Now can you tell me which cup has the water? This one? No! Oh, I see the second one. Well, it's empty too. Now let's try again. Now can you tell me which cup has the water? This one? No! Oh, I see the first one. Now can you tell me which cup has the water? This one? No! Oh, I see the third one. Well, it's empty too. This is why Jesus said we as believers are to walk by faith, and not by sight. Sight will always lead us down the wrong path. But walking by faith always helps us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Thanks for joining us today. Hello everyone, I am Professor Whoopi, and I'm here to whoopie up a big one for you today. Wow. We are looking at Joshua 40 years later. They now once again are ready to go into the promised land. This time, Joshua sends two spies that went in. They returned, and they were only to speak directly to Joshua and no one else. Now these spies were just normal men. They had no leadership positions, no decision making for their tribes or nation. So let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 2 verses 22 through 24. It says, When they left, they went into the hills and stayed there three days until the pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. Then the two men started back. They went down out of the hills, forded the river, and came to Joshua, son of Nun. They told him everything that happened to them. They said to Joshua, and I quote, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Whoa! Now that's in Joshua chapter 2 verses 22 through 24 in the NIV. Yes! Did you hear this? These two spies said, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands, and all the people are melting in fear because of us. Whoa! What a difference! Whoa! Between now and 40 years earlier. Remember, 40 years before, the people of Israel feared the people of the Promised Land. They kept saying, we can't do it. They're bigger than us. They're stronger than us. But 40 years later, what a difference. Remember, this new generation saw what their parents and grandparents went through. That when they disobeyed God, every one of them were not to make it to the promised land but somewhere along the way in the wilderness they died but this new generation that was raised up they were not about to make the same mistake that their parents did whoa no way and a couple more things here joshua's spies went in secret although they were discovered they visited a lady who gave them valuable information regarding the attitude of the people. The spies did not interpret this information, but simply reported it to Joshua. What they had been told 
and no moral judgment was made regarding the fact of Joshua's spies visiting this particular lady, nor is the information provided by her judged to be of questionable validity. It was valid. That's right, let's do that, because I don't think I said the other word right, totally right. Now, they observed Jericho's city, their strength, and everything that might be of importance to Joshua. Well, it is time for me to go, and it's time for me to say, Avirase, Arrivederci, Hasta la Vega, Hasta la Vega, Hula Hula, Whoa Ho Ho, last but not least, as always, Aruba Boo. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ho, ho, ho. Don't ever forget that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and Professor Whoopi and friends, we love you and we want to see the best for you. Now, I have to go, but the rest of the team will be here to wrap everything up today, so don't run away. Bye-bye. Which way is this arrow pointing to? That's right. It's pointing to the right. And there's a reason the arrow is pointing to the right, and that's because today I want to encourage you to make right decisions, right choices, to do the right thing and go the right way, to follow the right path. Because it is important that we do what is right. Right? Right. But the reality is that sometimes it's not so easy to do the right thing. You see, every now and then we realize that other people are going in a different direction. And they might even tell us, you know, what's right for you, that's wrong for me. And what's right for me, it might be wrong for you. So we all can just do whatever we think is right. But is that right? See, the reality is that I think one day all of us would love to know that whatever choices we're making, whatever path we are following, it will lead us to heaven. And the truth is that some people will tell you, you can actually choose any path. You really don't need anything to guide your life because whatever choices you make, one day you'll be in heaven. But is that true? Is that right? See, the Bible tells us that there is a path that leads to heaven, but there's also a path that leads to destruction. And the reality is that if we want to spend eternity in heaven, we need to do the right thing. And the right thing is to be sure that we always allow Jesus to be our guide, to allow him to guide our hearts and our lives. He will always lead us in the right direction. And one day, we'll even spend eternity with him. Greetings everyone. I'm Jenny with some final thoughts for today. As it was stated there is definitely a major contrast between Moses sending the 12 spies in and Joshua only sending two spies. Remember that the 12 spies were the leader of their tribes and they were well educated in making decisions both military and as the leaders of Israel. Moses gave his group a lot of responsibilities, while Joshua gave them only a few responsibilities to look for when spying out the land and Jericho. Also keep in mind that two were easier to get around possibly unnoticed versus having twelve spies going in a group. A.S. It was already mentioned, the report from the two was that God has given us this because the people fear us. God was already making the way for Israel to take the land. See you next week. Many people over time have tried to skate all around how Jesus said, that I am the way, and the truth and the life. When you come to Jesus, all you have to do is believe, and walk by faith. Yet mankind has always been trying to figure out how to get around this. In reality you can't. Our walk in the Lord is a walk by faith. Not sight. See what unfolds with our friends today. Class remember that what we have gone over in class this last week will be on the test tomorrow. I'm reminded of a scene from one of the Indiana Jones movies. One of my all-time favorite scenes is in The Last Crusade, where Indy's quest for the Holy Grail takes on a much more serious tone as he must find it in hopes of saving his father, who has been fatally wounded. Of course, there are three tests he must pass in his quest. And the third one is the toughest. To reach the chamber that holds the Grail, Indy must cross a 30-foot cavern with no obvious way to get to the other side. Yes, he is Indiana Jones, but this feat seems impossible. Following the instructions from his father's diary, 
he must take a step of faith. There is no bridge, at least no visible one. So he must go against all of his rational and intellectual reasoning and step into the void. He says leap of faith with a shaky whisper and tentatively puts out his foot. After the first step, his foot lands on solid ground to his astonishment. A bridge did exist after all, but its rocky texture matched the facing wall of the cavern so perfectly that it was invisible from his perspective. This is just a movie scene, but in reality, this is the same way we must learn to walk with God at the controls of our life. In other words, what does we walk by faith and not by sight mean? People of God, there is a choice we have to make and according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, that reads, for we walk by faith and not by sight, which means we don't live by sight. Our sight can be deceptive if we do not rely on God. This means that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ who is in heaven and He is our salvation. When He's in our spiritual heart, then we learn to walk by faith. We may not see God, but He's right there with you every step of the way. All we have to do is step out in simple faith. Take the leap, step out and see what God can do in our life. See you tomorrow class. Hey Sam. I got a great idea. Yay, what is it? Let go to my house and watch the DVD of The Last Crusade, I want to see that scene our teacher talked about. Sounds like a great idea. Let's go. Bob and Sam watched The Last Crusade, then they went to the Bible to find out more about walking by faith and not by sight. Let's check in with them. Wow, that movie was awesome. Do you think, that's the way God wants us to be? Yes, I believe it is. Sometimes we can be blind to where we're going and in the middle of the storm of life we can lose our bearings. Yes, I know. There's a song that goes like this. I know that song, it's one of Petra's on the CD Petra means rock. Yes. They're one of my favorite Christian rock bands. This is why our walk in the Lord is spiritual. By faith one day we will see Jesus and God. Awesome. There it is. It's simple, just walking by faith believing what God's Word tells us and experiencing the touch of Jesus in our daily life. Sight tends to cloud us at times. But faith will always lead us in the right direction, toward Jesus. Hello everyone! I am so excited! Yes I am! I'm really excited! Oh, did I tell you that? I'm so excited! Oh yes, oh I guess I did. All right, here we go. I'm so excited. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. That must have been the feelings that these two spies had when they came back to report to Joshua. Remember what Professor Whoopi read in the Bible? The Lord has surely given us the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Wow! Is that what it's meant to walk by faith and not by sight? Well... I guess that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness would make you re-examine everything. If God is real and he delivered your parents and grandparents out of Egypt and the Red Sea and provided food and water and everything that God did for them during the 40 years, then it really is time to continue to totally depend on God and walk by faith, not by sight. Plus, the group Petra is one of my favorite many Christian bands that P.F. listens to while he's working on our Bible stories. Well, anyway, I'm glad I got to be with you today. I'll see you next week. Oh, and by the way, I am really excited.
Adios Hispian and OJ Open Action. Thank you very much. <laughs>